usually with sequels, you tend to usually get a very mixed bag. There is usually that rare occasion when a sequel is definitely better than the original, but unfortunately most of the time when we do get one, they usually fall flat. So I would say about like a 20 to 75% chance, but hopefully this one can definitely be a sequel that surpasses the original. I'm freaking in. Where are the signs? What signs? Ah! So many signs. Ah! ah my old enemy. Stairs. Kung Fu Panda 2 was directed by Jennifer Yu Nelson and written by Jonathan Abel and Glenn Berger once again. Some returning and some newcomers, including Jack Black, Angelina Jolie, Dustin Hoffman, Gary Oldman, Seth Rogen, Lucy Liu, David Cross, James Ha, Michelle Yeoh, Dane McBride, Dennis Haysbert, Jean-Claude Van Damme, Victor Gerber, and Jackie Chan. According to IMDb's plot synopsis, Poe and his friends fight to stop a peacock villain from conquering China with a deadly new weapon, but first the dragon warrior must come to terms with his past. So, after the success of the first Kung Fu Panda film, both critically and commercially, I think we can all assume that it w was inevitable that there would be a sequel. Uh, and you guys know how much I enjoyed the first movie, I really liked it a lot. So, yeah, it's no surprise that there would be one that would be coming out. Although I am surprised that it took this movie three years to be released. Usually with sequels, there's usually about like a two year period, a year to maybe like a two year period. This, however, I'm surprised that this took three years to be finally a thing. You know, I thought that that was, it was something that I was completely surprised about. But here we are, three years after the first film, Kung Fu Panda 2 was released, and just like with the first film, I remember seeing the film when it came out, and I was about 10 years old at the time, and at the time, I thought that it was actually better than the first movie. I, I actually thought, it, even as a kid, I'm like, I actually kind of like this more than the first movie, and having me watch the film, I still stand by that. I still think that this is my favorite film of the series, by far, and one which I cherish the most in terms of which one i prefer it's gonna be this one so here are some of the positives that i found with the film the voice acting stellar again black is witty and as charming as poe now having mastered kung fu and having the title of dragon warrior black brings his energy to poe whenever he's fighting because as we all saw in the first movie he was learning kung fu but he was messing up he was clumsy but now that he has mastered kung fu black brings his same level of energy that he had for the comedy aspect to the fighting aspects in this movie and they work so well and he's just still brings the entertainment value i still think he is entertaining to watch i mean like i said there's a reason why he is one of animation's entertaining characters to watch because black just brings his persona to poe but not in a way that feels like it's obvious but rather it fits in that way it, it fits very well and just like with the first movie i think the furious five all of them angelina jolie seth rogan lucy Liu, david cross and jackie chan I still think they're fantastic. They have great dynamic with each other, but also I really like the rapport that they have with Black in this film. Because in the first movie, they had some, but it wasn't essentially focused on their camaraderie in that movie. It was mostly about Shifu and Poe. This one is more about Poe with the Furious Five, now on a mission. They all look to Poe now that he is the title of Dragon Warrior. They look to him for answers and whatnot. So yeah, I really had a blast seeing all six of the actors work very well off of each other. Gary Ullman is terrifying and as deadly as Lord Shen. Ullman just brings theatrics that he is known for because, I mean, if you know Gary Ullman, you know he can get very dramatic and very theatric with his performances, and this one is no exception, making a delightful and finished bow to Poe. It's very interesting to see the dynamic in how both you see Ullman, who is a classically trained 
professional actor versus <laughs> Jack Black. I mean, you just, you don't really picture that, but it, it works. It works really well. And as much as I do think that both Hoffman and Han aren't in the film that much, they are both commendable as both Shipu and Mr. Payne. I, I very much like both of their performances in the film and i think for pain tom brings a good emotional moment with black especially when they're discussing how mr pain found poe when he was a baby and i thought that that brought an emotional moment to the movie and a delightful sweet moment to see their relationship be developed through a flashback sequence i i thought it was really well done man the animation is gorgeous. It's still incredible to look at, even improving on the animation for the first movie. Because they're in the first movie, you can kind of tell that there were some moments where it feels like it was definitely made in 2008. I'm still surprised that this is made in 2011. I, I'm generally still surprised because it, it, it looks incredible. It looks gorgeous. All the characters, environments, and sites just look stunning. They are. It is just excellent to see how the animation still holds up after so long. And how the character models still look just right, as well as the environments. Everything about it just looks fantastic. The story, I think, is excellent. Seeing Poe confront his past with the villain who wiped out his people. I think tragic, but also kind of fascinating. You don't usually think of, like, a kid's movie where you talk about a tragic subject matter of, like, a genocide of your people. And it was really interesting to see this movie tackle that, in a way. And it was also interesting to see how Poe deals with his past and characters understanding this to keep the film interesting. Because throughout the film, you see how characters characters are reacting to Poe revealing what happened to him when he was young. And I was really riveted seeing them understand his past and understand what he's going through. The music is amazing. Both, again, composers Hans Zimmer and John Powell return to score and they keep the same momentum as the first movie. Capturing trans music amazingly and when the action sequences happen, the music is intense and exciting. These two composers keep you entertained with that music and it keeps you just excited hearing it whenever it comes through. The direction is, I think, fantastic. I think Jennifer Hugh Nelson brings a lot of energetic kinetic feel to the film, and I think she really keeps the film exciting and entertaining as the movie progresses. She just knows when to keep the film comedic, but also dramatic, but also exciting to watch. And it's one of those reasons why I think she just had that voice, that energy, when it came to this movie, and I applaud her for that. The action sequences are spectacular. Every action scene is well-crafted and well-executed, and I think the film keeps the action consistent with each scene. The action just keeps topping itself. I think it even tops the first movie's action sequences. It just keeps going and going, and it just keeps you entertained and just in awe of how they thought of the action sequences in this movie. The writing is, I think, excellent. Just like the first film, the writing is sharp and witty. Whether it be a hilarious or emotional scene, the writing is tight no matter what. They keep this film sharp through and through. And when the jokes hit, they hit. They work well. And when the dramatic moments happen, they happen. And they hit you really well. The pacing and runtime is, I think, perfect. Each scene flows very well and keeps the film going. With the runtime of 1 hour and 32 minutes, I think the film just feels right with regards to how long this can be. And it just, it feels perfect. It feels right for what this story is supposed to be. The editing is, I think, top-notch. Again, sharp and fast. It, it keeps the film paced very well. It keeps the film going and, and knows when to quick cut in a way that doesn't feel obnoxious, but feels right. The film just has so many memorable moments, whether it's a hilarious or emotional moments that stand out from like Poe in the Furious Five in a dragon mascot to Poe confronting his past. These moments are what make the film memorable throughout and one in which I, I really enjoy. This is one of these rare movies that, in my opinion, I still think that this is better than the original. For me, at least. I, I really enjoy the film from beginning to end, and I think overall, this is a worthy follow-up to the first movie. And I can't stress this enough. I highly recommend, after watching the first movie, definitely watch this one. It is so amazing, so fantastic. I'm going to give Kung Fu Panda 2 a 10 out of 10. I had a fun, enthralling time watching it. And it just brings me back to when I saw this in the theater. Loved it then, and I love it now. So yeah. Definitely check it out if you guys can. So I will be giving my review for Comfort Panda 3 and 4. And of course other movie reviews. So yeah, 
Look forward to those reviews and other movie TV show reviews coming soon.